also exists in the way that uh, the, the media portrays cops in our society, right? In the media, cops are portrayed as uh, these cool and hilarious folks and they engage in hijinks while keeping us safe, you know, from us. You have cops like Axel Foley and John McClain and the whole cast of Brooklyn Nine-Nine who are badasses with a heart, you know? That's how we see them. Cops even co-opted The Punisher, who is a comic book character that was created out of the frustration regarding the corruption and ineptitude of law enforcement. They turned his logo into the symbol for the thin blue line, which is also what you call a cop's penis. Frank Castle has beat the shit out of cops because they were bad people abusing their powers. And the creator of The Punisher was so upset about the bastardization of his logo by the true bastards that he came up with a new line of logos supporting the Black Lives Matter movement, which Frank Castle 100% would. He would definitely support this movement. If you can't read the, uh, the, the little comic panel, it's uh, the guy he's holding upside down says, but I'm a cop. And Frank says, congratulations. So yeah, it's not a logo to be used for cops. Trump has put into place Operation Warp Speed to help find a vaccine. And this is the worst fucking name for an initiative to find a vaccine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like a vaccine involves like research and trials and testing and recent te re retesting and, and global administration, right? It's not warp speed. 
Look, Warp Speed. <laughs> Warp Speed is like a really good name for like a futuristic propulsion system that has transcended light speed to explore the galaxy. You know, it's it's a really good name for how you should watch the Twilight movie franchise. <laughs> <laughs> It's an excellent way to get away from an ex. <laughs> <laughs> or get get away from like a vacation slideshow. <laughs> <laughs> Warp speed is the speed at which your body removes anything you ate from McDonald's because that's not real food. <laughs> <laughs> But when it comes to developing a vaccine, speed shouldn't be the prerogative, right? Look, creating a vaccine should be like sex. Follow me on this. <laughs> you shouldn't rush it, you know? There should be a little courting, right? You should get to know each other a little bit. That's like the research phase. That's what researching is all about. You want to you want to have a little foreplay in there, right? That's what all the the trials and the testing are. Much like condoms, safety is important. <laughs> Consent is important in this situation, and that comes from knowing that there's a mutual understanding by both parties about what's happening. Right? That includes educating people on what the vaccine is, how it was created, and making sure that we're all going to have a good time with it. <laughs> <laughs> and when it comes down to sex and vaccines, we definitely don't want Bill Gates involved. <laughs> How to leave him out of both? <laughs> and much like good sex, it should come with no strings attached, right? You shouldn't use sex as a point of control or power or profit, just like you shouldn't try to use this vaccine as a point of control, power, and profit. It should be free and available to everybody once it's developed, just like sex should be free and available to everybody <laughs> that consents to it. <laughs> It's really nice. Look. No
All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the program. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys are doing okay. Uh, it's 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 a it's a Monday. Uh, where I'm at, it's kind of a cloudy ass Monday. <laughs> so, and I'm trying to go for a, a little walk later. So hopefully uh, the clouds dissipate. We get a little bit more sunshine. We get no rain because uh, because your boy your boy needs some exercise. I uh, need to get back into um, into, into just so, some sort of exercising shape. Look, I'm in my thirties. Uh, I'm I'm gonna be thirty three in a few months here, and and I'm not here to kid myself. Most of the exercising I'm doing isn't to fucking get chiseled and ripped and fucking be able to lift a a boulder above my head. Uh, no, it's to basically uh, make sure that my body doesn't fall apart by the time I'm 40. Uh, but some of some of the regular viewers might know that there has been a lot of uh, external stress <laughs> uh, in my in my life right now, which has um, made things a little bit difficult. So I haven't been exercising as regularly as I was, uh, you know, I had a couple months where I was doing some pretty regular exercising. I was feeling a lot better. I was noticing a couple of gains, uh, which I, I guess is like a workout term uh, to like build, you know, b building muscles. Like your muscles do get bigger and they get more tone and uh, like visibly more tone and all that. Uh, but yeah, over the last two weeks, that has uh, decreased quite a bit to the point where on Saturday I did a pretty like heavy uh, cardio and lifting workout. Uh, yesterday I ate a whole bunch of shit <laughs> because I think my body was like, you did a bunch of crazy shit on Saturday and didn't put enough food back in your body to like help recharge your body. So uh, trying to, trying to get back into it, I'm trying to, to, you know, just feel a little bit better. It also helps my mental health. That, that's another. Th I, I don't know if this is for you guys. You know, if this is, chime in in the comments or not. But uh, I always feel like, you know, when I do exercise, it improves my mental health. Um, I feel less anxious. I feel less depressed. Uh, and my, I'm able to focus a little bit more uh, as well. Uh, I mean, that's been like th that. That's been like that since, uh, you know, since I was like in college. That's what working I like I would always feel better after I worked out so so yeah I'm I'm trying to get back into that I'm hoping that the weather does not turn so that I can go on my walk uh if not you know I'll adjust and do do something else but that was my plan um live shows are coming back I've got a bunch of dates I should put that banner up I've got a bunch of dates. We've got Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Baltimore, Lansing, Detroit, Little Rock. Uh, trying to confirm a couple more dates. Looking at uh, places like Louisville, Cincinnati, uh, Columbus, um, Minneapolis, Chicago. Um, a bunch of other places. Huntsville, Alabama, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee. Trying to come back to a few places. Writing a whole new show. I did get some writing done. Last week, um, uh, a good portion of it, I gotta, I gotta figure out how I want to close the show, which I think I have an idea of how I want to close the show. Uh, and uh, and I gotta, you know, punch it up a little bit. Those are those are kind of the goals for this week. So tomorrow night, I'll I'll go back to doing what I usually do when I write these shows: is I will go sit at a bar with my headphones on. <laughs> Uh, grab a beer and and uh, be left alone to write. Uh, I I think part of that has to do with the fact that the last three shows I basically wrote at bars and coffee shops across the country. So that kind of environment I think is what my brain is used to. So when I'm at home, like I can write, you know, a new forkful or dispatches or whatnot. I think it's a different because the process of of writing that is a little bit different. Whereas writing stand-up is, I think it uses a different part of my creative brain. I, I, don't, I don't really know, but, and part of it might be the fact that I'm used to writing in that kind of an environment because that's what I did for the last three shows. So I really struggled the first week of July trying to like get the show off the ground and be like, okay, how do I want to do this? How do I want to edit it? 
and I would get distracted, you know, so I, I tried to veer away from that and, and just go sit at a bar, uh, pretty successful. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited at the direction that the show is taking. Um, and, uh, last but not least, I got a, uh, I think I've come to <laughs> come to the conclusion that I am going to not respond to shitty capitalist trolls on YouTube or Odyssey. Uh, not so much on Rockfin. Um, Odyssey and YouTube, particularly, probably because the the capitalist trolls are migrating from YouTube to Odyssey, so they're finding like videos about socialism and communism and stuff like that. And they're just kind of going after them or, or or really any like you don't even have to espouse to socialism or communism is the philosophy that you believe in. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty openly socialist. I, I think that should go without saying. I don't think that should be a surprise to anybody. If it is a surprise to people like, OK, I guess you've either been in denial based on everything that I'm saying uh, or you just haven't been paying attention to what I've been saying for a long time now. Um, but they kind of come at you. And over the weekend, uh, you know, I saw this guy and I was like, OK, maybe I'll try to engage him a little bit. And and I and I was a little snarky with him, but he was being a little snarky with me. So if you're going to give the snark, then you should be able to take it, too. Um, but this guy's a troll. He's a he's a shit poster. And I thought maybe I'll engage him a little bit. And then I and then I immediately backed off because it was like a lot of LMF LMFAO. You're so dumb. Like, don't you think this like you're you're just don't you believe in democracy? And it's like America is not a fucking democracy, man. Like this is an oligarchy that's provable, you know, and then he was like, back up your claims. And I was like, dude, I don't have time to debate you over in the comments section of a fucking video. Like there is plenty of videos on my channel that back up all the claims that I make. Uh, you know, like this is a pretty extensive channel. I do a lot of extensive research and I try to share all that knowledge with as many people as possible. So like, I don't have time to, for, for, to, to fulfill your, I, I don't even know, like you want to sound smart, I guess. Um, so it's like, you know, this is, this is a waste of my time. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like engage with people that are clearly, going to just be sh shit posters and trolls so why am i trying to to do that so i'm, I'm I've, I've made a pretty just big decision in my life to be like all right i'm really not going to respond to these comments unless unless it seems like they're the, the person who is leaving the comment is at least somewhat rational and not uh just a shit posty troll i don't know why i'm, I'm I, I think i'm seeing more of them because it's becoming more and more evident that capitalism is a poison on this planet uh, is a cancer ravaging through the through the world and is eventually going to lead to our extinction. Uh, and and some people can't wrap their heads around it because they've been so immersed in that ideology and they believe in it so wholeheartedly that believing the opposite would shatter their entire existence and they don't want to do that. So they go with these runaround justifications of like, I'm a capitalist, but I care about people. Unless they owe me money, then you I care about the money more than I do the person. It's like then you're not a caring person. Like anyway, um I think we need to dive into our stories here. Let me double double check to see. Um uh Fred Fred says, ooh, extensive. That's a big dollar word. I, I have a lot of big dollar words, Fred. <laughs> I got a I got a couple of them. I got a couple of them uh tucked away in my back pocket i got a lot of big words i don't tend to use them very often they're not a part of my vernacular all right <laughs> let's get into our stories for the day uh ba -ba -ba -ba. so our first story is about cuba cuba's been in the news uh kind of floating around the news quite a bit uh, and uh, I'll, I'll start the story with this. So they just approved two pretty major vaccines in their country uh, that have approximately a 92% efficacy. And that efficacy is probably going to, you know, keep going up and all that sort of stuff. Um, so the, so I, I apologize if I fucking butcher the names of these, uh, 
you know, vaccines. Uh, but it looks like the Soberana 2 and the Abdallah vaccine both have pretty uh, similar results. 92% efficacy, three booster shots. So instead of two, it would be three. Um, and uh, they're also pretty strong against the beta and delta variants. So we're looking at, you know, a vaccine that can pretty much help with the variants that are coming out. Um, and by the way, I, I, I also want to say this is I do think that the vaccines in America were rushed. Uh, I absolutely believe that they were rushed. Um, and I think we would have seen a lot less of those kind of crazy side effect stories had things waited a little bit. But, you know, Biden didn't want to wait. I don't think anybody from the American scientific community, which is linked to American politics and American money, uh, wanted to wait because it was all about let's get the economy back. Um, it's not let's help the people. It's how can we use this thing to get people to start spending money the way that they need to. Um, and, you know, we, we the reason we saw all those stories, the reasons why all those side effects were coming out was because of that. I think it was rushed. Um, and the th I mean, the thing with science is that it learns, it evolves, it changes, that sort of stuff. But I do think it was rushed, whereas I think vaccines that are coming out of places like Cuba uh, that have taken their time and they're like, yeah, OK, we need a, a third booster because guess what? We know coronaviruses evolve, mutate and change rather quickly. Um, we should probably like take the time to do this right. Uh, so now Cuba is on track to become the first fully vaccinated country on the planet. They're, they're claiming by the end of the year they'll be able to vaccinate all 11 million adults in their country, which is huge. That's like a huge, huge claim to say, right? Now, at the same time, there are U.S. sanctions and embargoes that are preventing Cuba from effectively distributing this vaccine, not just to their own people, but to other countries that need it as well, right? There's a lot of South American countries that need it. Uh, there's uh, a, a lot of island nations that need this, African, uh, African nations that need it, India. India needs more vaccines. About two months ago, we were talking about how India is facing this devastating fucking wave of, of, um, of COVID. Maybe it was a month ago, right? Um, and I mean, for the, the personal attachment to that is not only because it's the country that I was born in, but also my parents were going there because my grandfather had passed away. And I was like, okay, holy shit. I hope that you guys are going to be okay because this is scary. And there were reports that the United States could, uh, you know, open up the patents and send it over to the Serum Institute of India so that they can start developing vaccines on their own and distributing it to their people. But the patents were closed, and Bill Gates basically said, well, it'll cost us money, so we don't want to do that. Again, capitalism choosing capital over people, whereas socialism would choose people over profit, and so would communism because it's about the community and not the profit. Uh, so... Countries like Cuba, I mean, Mexico came out and said, hey, um, you know, we're trying to vaccinate as many of our people as possible. But right now we have a little bit of a surplus of the vaccine that we're using. So we're going to send our surplus over to India. America was hoarding a vaccine that isn't even approved in this country just in case. Just in case for what? Just in case you find another country that needs it more and try to figure out a way to use sanctions and 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 economics to fucking screw those people over to exploit them to hold them hostage why are you why are you uh, accumulating that many vaccines of a of, of a vaccine that's not even approved in your own country astrazeneca is not approved here it is approved in india it is approved in the uk kind of i think astrazeneca was um sent to the back burner a little bit but Cuba wants to do it, right? They're like, hey, we're ready to do it. But right now, Cuba's, Cuba's on track to do that. 
to, to become the first fully vaccinated country, but they are still having a problem with syringes, right? They need more syringes. They can't manufacture as many syringes, but they can't get those syringes. Why? Because there's U.S. sanctions and embargoes and blockades that they can't get the equipment that they need. They can't get the food that they need. Same thing with Iran. Iran's facing the same thing. They're saying, hey, we would like to vaccinate our people, but you guys have imposed these sanctions on us. And, you know, if Biden wants to come out and be Mr. Anti-Trump, which is something that he wants to be, why in the fuck would you keep those murderous sanctions in place? If you want to flip, if you if you want to show that you're the humanitarian president, now would be the time to say, yes, we have our ideological differences. But right now we need to 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 push forward so that, you know, we don't have to shut the country down again. We don't have to shut the globe down again. Come winter time. Why would you not do that? These sanctions are clearly preventing medical uh, equipment, food, resources that that co countries like Cuba and Iran need from getting to those people. And that's what U.S. sanctions do. That's what all sanctions do. They're not economic sanctions. They're economic warfare. The fact that they have this vaccine that can be distributed across the world that I'm sure that they will share the patents of with whoever they feel needs it. That should be a, a signal to for the Biden administration to say, OK, let's lift these sanctions. Let's get rid of these blockades. Let's focus on helping people. But they're not. What are they doing instead? Uh, what they're doing instead is... Uh, basically claiming that, well, this is communism's fault. The reason why they don't have these these resources and stuff coming to them is because of communism. That's really all it is, which is bullshit, which is a total lie. The reason why they're not getting in is because of the U.S. sanctions and blockades, which is economic war. It's economic warfare. That's what it should be called. Economic sanctions is an, is an inaccurate term. What they really are is economic warfare. So they'll impose these sanctions. The people of the country start to, to, to suffer. There becomes this disparity that happens. And then they go, ah, communism. See, it's failing. See how they're suffering over there? Because, because look, what's in charge? Communism. No, no, no. It's outside interference from capitalist countries like America that are causing these people to suffer. You don't, you don't seem to mention that, though. But they go, oh, well, we put these sanctions because the people are suffering of uh, 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 communist rule. Wait, what? If you if that is the case, hold on, if that is the case, which we don't which we haven't seen because nobody bothers to go back in history to take a look at whether it is communism causing that or not. Fine. If you want to claim that it's communism doing that, then, OK, get rid of your sanctions. Get rid of your sanctions. Let communism work. Because even with your sanctions, the people are suffering, right? If the point of the sanctions is for the government to go, oh, well, we need to take care of our people better. And the government's going, yeah, we'd love to take care of our people. But like your sanctions are getting in the way and they go up. Oh, well, that's because you're not treating your people properly. It's this loop. It's what abusers do. <laughs> this is this is how abusers talk. Fine. If, if you believe it's communism, fine. Get rid of your sanctions. Get rid of your embargoes and blockades and then see what happens. If the people continue to suffer in a year, then, yeah, I think everybody can accept. Oh, yeah. OK, that was because of communism. And maybe we need to put sanctions on this government so that they act better. But what will most likely happen is that the people under this country's rule will start to thrive. They'll get the equipment that they need because other countries want to do business with them. They're not violating human rights under 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 that rule, under communist rule, under socialist rule. Neither one of them. They have health care. No one's in medical debt. People are taken care of. It's not they're not developing industries that exist in the short term. Right. Cars, technology, phones last a little bit longer. Because they're not looking for endless profit. They're looking for how to better humanity. 
that's what will likely happen. So now there are a bunch of these protests over there. And what's happening is they're they're using those protests. And I think some of them, you know, they're they're th that this might actually be the case is like they are they are saying, oh, we're against this government because this government is is causing us to suffer, not knowing that the reason why they're suffering is because of U.S. sanctions. They're using these protests, people like Marco Rubio, Biden and all that um, to demonize communism, to say, well, look, the, the, the people of Cuba are, are 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 sick of it, are fed up with this stuff. So they're they're revolting. They're they're protesting against it. Uh, blah blah blah. No, what they're really protesting, whether they know it or not, is U.S. sanctions and blockades. I will keep saying that till it sinks into people's heads, because I know this video. I know I know that this is going to get a bunch of trolls to come down and start talking about how communism has killed so many people. No, authoritarianism has killed a lot of people. Capitalism which is an undemocratic economic system, has killed more people. It hasn't uplifted anybody from poverty. Very few people. And those people are up at the top and they control the government, which is then oppressing the lower classes, which is then creating this cycle of violence. Henceforth, capitalism doesn't pull people out of poverty. If it did, we would have way less homeless people in America we would have way less people working two to three jobs to make ends meet. And if you're claiming that's what capitalism is, then you've proven my point. <laughs> you, have pe you have people like fucking Marco Rubio coming out and being like, well, the Cuban military shouldn't fire upon its own citizens, which is true. I don't think any military should be firing upon its own citizens, but you don't say that when American military does that to its own citizens. Last summer, how many how many like the, the U.S. Marshals were kidnapping people? The cops were firing on on average civilians. The National Guard gets constantly called in anytime there's a protest because a killer cop keeps walking free. The murders of Breonna Taylor, Tamir Rice, uh, Mike Brown, Antoine Rose, Eric Garner. Sandra Bland. I mean, the list goes on and on. These people walk free. So every time there's a protest to say these people shouldn't be walking free and our lives are, are just as important as, as yours, the National Guard gets called and fires on its own citizens. Yet Marco Rubio stays silent when it comes to that. See the hypocrisy in this messaging here? There's a problem with the way that the story is being told. But all of it's performative, right? Like Joe Biden is just and, and Marco Rubio, they're all being performative. Re-election's coming up. Marco Rubio needs the Cuban vote. And he's going to sit there and say, well, yeah, we want Cubans to come to America because they'll have a better life. Because that'll get him the Cuban vote in Florida because the, because more than likely the people that are coming to this country are from, from places like Cuba, Venezuela and stuff like that are all the upper class folks. They're not the average working class person. The other part is it's very likely that, most Americans don't know the deep history of Cuba. I, I, I'm not going to say I know the deep history of Cuba because I haven't done that research yet. But I know propaganda when I see it. I know the way that the terminology is used. Don't forget, a couple weeks ago, the Biden administration and the United States Navy have equated the term socialism with domestic terror, political ter terror, and neo-Nazis. Why? Because we put people over profit. Because we want you to have a healthy life. Because we don't want people to work three jobs to make ends meet. We don't want people to go homeless. So that makes us domestic terrorists? That's insanity. <laughs> if Joe Biden really wants to go behind, beyond the performative of saying, we stand by the Cuban people. Good, if you want to stand by the Cuban people, lift your fucking homicidal sanctions. Let these people do what they need to do. 
Keep your fucking grubby hands off of Cuba. Keep your grubby hands off of Iran. Keep your grubby hands out of Venezuela, Ecuador, Bolivia, Honduras, Colombia, Nicaragua, Mexico, all of these countries. Guatemala, you have no business putting your grubby little shit hands on those countries. If communism is really as bad as it is, okay, let them be under communist rule. See what happens. More than likely, we'll find out that it's not all that bad. And this decades-long McCarthyist Cold War bullshit will be proven wrong. And that's what they're afraid of. So they need to control the narrative. They need to control the economy. They need to, they need to put these sanctions to prove themselves right. But it's only because of the of, of, of capitalist interference are why these people are suffering. Pop over your comments. Let's look it over. Got some folks tuning in. Gene, good to see you. Holly, hello. How's it going? Uh, Gene, for, formerly Climate Rebel. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, that's that's good to know. I was gonna say, oh, cool, we got some new uh, uh, new new viewers, but it's good to see. You. Welcome back, Gene. I should say, welcome back. Um, Holly saying, apparently, the protests in Cuba are in part about access to the vaccines. Why? I mean, why wouldn't it be though? I, I'm I'm not surprised that that's that's a part of it. I I didn't read that in part of the stories, but you know, I'm I'm sure that is 100% a part of it. I didn't read that in there, but I think a lot of people are are paying more attention to the fact that the U.S. sanctions are the big part of why this is happening. Uh, Gene says, Black Bear News. Oh, just, pa it just scroll down. Pa -pa -pa -pa. Black Bear News reported on an article that debunked it. The pics were of a different protest. That's wonderful. That's awesome. But that, I mean, but that's what it is. Even the, even the president kind of came out and was just like, hey, these protests aren't, anti-cuban or anti-communism they they're anti-american sanctions like that's why we I, I want people to know that like you, if you believe that this is about communism then if it's an anti-communist protest then like you're you're not listening to the to the actual people that are like in the revolution that helped us get to this point um and yeah black bear news is something that i've been trying to i, I need to sit down and watch but it's hard man I, I have like the the 10 people that I that I watch and I barely get through them. <laughs> so like I know people suggest stuff and uh, uh, and it's like, ah, uh, I want to watch this thing, but I got these other sources to watch. So it, I, it's it's super hard. So uh, I, I appreciate you sharing that story because it, it definitely does get uh, gets lost in the in, in, in the in the noise that we hear. Uh, Fred says these morons are sharing images of protests from around the globe and claiming them as Cuba. I saw one for that was from Argentina. Yeah, you know, that was. Um, uh, that 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 was interesting because I did see some of those photos and I was like, these don't look th this looks like stuff I've seen. You know. From from elsewhere in the world, it's it's. Uh, it's unfortunate, but that's what, I mean, people don't know, right? Like, that's the thing is like, people just don't know. They don't know what they're actually looking at half the time. And when it comes from mainstream sources, you got to double check it because they're not, uh, they're not, they're not fucking accurate. That's the word I'm looking for. Sorry. I'm, I'm like trying to read your comments and come up with, <laughs> with this thing. <laughs> So uh, I apologize if I'm a little slow. Dragonatha uh, says ivermectin, but wait, it only costs a few bucks and its patent ran out a few years ago. Is that what's going on with ivermectin? I'm not particularly well versed in that. I know it's an anti-parasitic, uh, which, you know, they're, they're, India has a bunch of those drugs that are anti-parasitics, but they also act as other things. Like there's a, a, a medication I took that was basically like like a advanced ibuprofen so when i would get i got heat stroke when i was in india and my aunt gave me this medication you know i drank some like electrolyte water it's called electrol 
And I drank that, and then she gave me this this pill, and it's like an antiparasitic, but it helps with headaches, migraines, stuff like that. Um, I I don't know enough about ivermectin to to say one way or the other, but you know, again, if it's if it's something that isn't going to help big pharma, I would very much assume that that is going to be you know kind of demonized and thrown out there. Uh, but I know there's some folks doing like a World Ivermectin Day. I'm not really sure what's going on with it. That's that's another one of those stories where I. I've seen it, but I haven't been able to track it and follow it and all that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, it, it, if, if its patents run out a few years ago, then I bet somebody's going to try to grab a you know generic version of it or something, or or, or grab those patents. And and if if it's if it's anywhere even near a cure all for anything, not even for COVID, if it's like a malaria cure all. Or like it helps your digestive system get better, so you don't get sick that often. Uh, you know they'll they'll buy up the patents and then fucking kill the medication. You'll never see it. You'll never see it. And uh, and again, I I would wager to bet that if the sanctions are lifted, that the uh, so Soberana. I, I, again, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing these words. Soberana and uh, Abdallah will end up sharing what they know with the rest of the world that's that's what you should do these these patent laws are ridiculous um and they're an impediment they're they're 100 percent an impediment to bettering humanity bettering mankind um and stuff like that so uh zuzvik says he's behind 10 minutes do i have a panera uh do i have a panera i do i do have a panera i do have a panera around um, but you know, I, I always feel weird about going in and getting just a cup of coffee to, to, uh, um, just sit there and I don't know, like do my work. I, it, it just feels weird that I just refill my coffee and I get, I get too jittery. I'm, I mean, you know, it's like two, three hours of writing a night. I, I can handle that going to a bar. It's weird. I think it's psychological to, <laughs> to be writing at a bar. I don't know what it is. But I feel more comfortable in, in that environment. Um, okay. Uh, we're going to move on. I know some people are, are behind on the stream. Uh, so if you leave a comment for a previous story, I'll try to address it. I'll, I'll try to get to that. Um, but uh, we're, we're going to plow ahead to, to our next story. Uh, this story is, is tragically hilarious. So I, I, I this came up on Left Voice. And... Uh, and I was a little surprised seeing it, and there's no other real, like, corporate news didn't even cover this, even though it sounds like something that corporate news would cover, right? Um, the LAPD confiscated a bunch of fireworks in, in this neighborhood, you know, saying that they trafficked it from across state lines, things of that sort. And, uh, you know, that's fine, but honestly, like, who cares? Is this the, is this the most important thing that, that the cops could have been doing is, is busting up like a fireworks joint of people that are like, yeah, we brought this stuff from across the, so that some people can participate in this holiday. I'm, I, you know, I, I'm at a point now where, I mean, when I was a kid, I used to love fireworks. We used to set them off for Diwali all the time. That was when I would see fireworks. And then when I came here, there was one year where the temple celebrated Diwali and like everybody got sparklers and they would light off these fireworks and there'd be this big display and everything like that. And then after that, they just weren't able to get permits to do it. So, you know, so now it's like they have the little sparkler parties and stuff like that. And, that, and that's about as much as we can do for Diwali. But Fourth of July, you know, is... Like everybody wants fireworks all the time, so so maybe they they I, I don't know the details of what actually happened with this with with the trafficking of the fireworks, but also like who really gives a shit, you know? Like who cares? Maybe they were trying to bring some joy to the neighborhood. Yeah, I I, I don't particularly like fireworks going off because I have a lot of friends that are veterans, and they've talked about like yeah, it triggers PTSD stuff. Pets don't like it. Um, you know, so I, I tend to, at this point, I'm like, 
I can do without them. Or if I am going to, you know, not that I, that I would, I would, you know, if there's a veteran in my neighborhood that I know about just to go knock on their door and be like, Hey, you know, we're, we're going to light off fireworks. Are you cool with that? You know, if not, we can just do them sometime else or at a different location, something like that. Just have some kindness, you know, in celebrating your hyper-nationalism. But I guess hyper-nationalism in and of itself doesn't particularly have a lot of kindness associated with it. Anyway, uh, so instead of taking it to a safe place to dispose of it or, or to just put it in an evidence lockup, uh, they called the media and they wanted to show off their new toy, which was this bomb-diffusing truck that they had. And so they set off the fireworks in this bomb defusing truck to be like, look how great this thing is. And it blew up. Uh, it didn't work. And it like damaged a bunch of cars. 17 people got injured. Then, you know, the neighborhood could have been uh, burnt. We could have had another a move situation, which happened in Philadelphia back in the 80s, where this entire you know, black neighborhood got burnt down because the cops were at war with uh, with with a bunch of black environmentalists, black anti-capitalist environmentalists, you know. And you got to imagine like this thing, they called them specifically to be like, look at this new toy we have. Look how awesome it is. Like we busted this fireworks ring and fucking we're, now we're going to show you how we can dispose of this stuff. What if that had been an actual bomb? And And this happened. What would, what would be the LAPD's response? I mean, even then, it took them a while to, like, respond to this thing. And their response was basically, like, we're going to look into what happened. What do you mean you're going to look into what happened? A bunch of fucking officers decided to showboat. That's not part of your job. So here's here's something that uh, I think is interesting to point out, too, in, in terms of like how cops control narratives, um, because that's what's going to happen with this kind of story is the cops are going to control the narrative for this. So. I got this from Rad Indie Media, which is and uh, which is a great site you should go check out. But it's a free, th a free thought project article that they shared uh, where Thomas Nolan, who is who's a cop that was on the force for 27 years. Uh, said he wasn't a good beat cop, so he but he could write police reports. So like a bunch of people would constantly come up and and say, "Hey, write these police reports." Um, so he says he would routinely advise his subordinates to incorporate a short list of buzzwords in their reports to frame themselves as a hero and the suspect who might have been injured or killed out as the aggressor. Uh, those use of force. Reports ultimately were chock full of words like resist, overcome, vigorous, violent, subdue, fear, and attack. Nolan said even if they were exaggerations. So, you know, when you hear words like, oh, they were resisting or violence or there was fear or I was trying to subdue them, it's just a cover for uh, explicit police violence, over-the-top brutality. This is where this is the other thing that he says, right? He says, I thought these cops were doing the right thing and catching bad guys and oftentimes did it in ways that might not pass legal muster. And I got them over the hurdle. I thought that that was something that my that was my contribution and my necessary contribution. So, again, you know, I got to make them look like heroes. I got to make them look good. And, you know, the assumption again, and this is the assumption that a lot of people make and a lot of conservative cops end up uh, or not conservative cops but just conservative people make about cops is that anybody that gets apprehended anybody that gets pulled over is automatically a bad guy because in society we're we're trained to think that cops are are good people they're always good guys they're always trying to do the right thing and that's how they operate but that's never the that's never the truth i mean this LA, lapd case is the same thing it's like you you tried to showboat what are they going to do how are they going to pin it on 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 the you know the guys that were f trafficking fireworks which again in the grand scheme of thing who really gives a shit this is like going to prison for for having some weed on you who really gives a shit they had an ounce of marijuana on them and you put them in prison for 10 years go fuck yourself who really gives a shit 
So then his last statement in this article, and it's a short article, so if you want to go read it, I would recommend you, you know, check it out. It's not that long. Um, it says, what we've seen unfold over the years since videos have become just everyday ubiquitous depictions of police interactions with the public is that there's pretty solid evidence that the police have misrepresented and mischaracterized incidents they're involved in. The recordings give substance to the skepticism that many people now have about police and their version of events. But even those videos are often, you know, people kind of see whatever they want to see in those videos. Um, you know, like there are people that watch those videos and go, ah, ah that, did you see that shoulder twitch from that guy? That, that was an aggressive, that's a fast twitch. That's, the, you know, and they come up with these excuses of like, it's like a shoulder twitch. You went by a shoulder twitch and that somehow said that he deserved to get shot 18 times. Like, what are you talking about? You know, like it's because people can't get over their biases. They look at these videos and they go, the cops have to be a good guy. There has to be a reason why they did it. And they justify police brutality when really the reason why this police brutality happened is because fucking cops are racist. That's what they are. The system is racist. The system teaches them that these people are the enemy. Everybody that's not wearing a badge and a gun is your fucking enemy. That's how the system operates. And they can't get over that. Now, like I said, the LAPD is claiming that they're going to investigate it, but those reports, if those reports even come out, if this story is even talked about, um, we'll have flowered language of like, well, there were these resistors and we had to get rid of this so that we could make an example and the cops were using their better judge, you know, this, that, and the third, and there was a test done. Well, none of that matters. You still fucking blew up a neighborhood. You injured 17 people, destroyed people's cars. Are you going to pay for that? Are you going to cover these people's medical expenses? Because you should. You're responsible for them getting hurt. That wasn't collateral damage. That wasn't a, 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 a high-speed car chase. There wasn't a hostage situation. This wasn't the movies. They had no reason to do that. And then, again, it kind of adds to the point of, like, this is why we talk about defunding the police. They don't need toys like this. The bomb disposal, the, you know, uh, bomb disposal unit, uh, whatever, the explosives unit, that should be a separate thing. And, yeah, it's important to have something like that just in case. I get it. But that's not part, that, that, that's a, that should be a separate thing. That should be a part of the police budget. And there's going to be a media blackout on this, too. Nobody else is going to be talking about this shit. Like I said, I got it off of left voice. So, yeah. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Zozovic says, reckless endangerment. Arrest these cops for threatening to burn down the neighborhood. They're terrorists. Agreed. Uh, that's what they do to us, so fuck them. Yeah, mandatory three years hard labor and make sure uh, they own the government 100K when they get out. <laughs> yeah, it's completely ridiculous. Completely ridiculous. I agree. I think these cops should be off the force, reckless endangerment, uh, you know, putting people's lives in danger. These people should be, these should, people should be in prison. They should not be allowed to be out there in the community making decisions like this. Um, yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Uh, I know a couple of you guys are, are a little behind on the stream, so I, I hope you guys have an opportunity to catch up a little bit. Um, and, uh, and any comments I, I kind of see that are related to some other stories, I'll try to get to at the very end of the, the stream here, uh, just so I'm, I make sure I can respond to certain things. So, uh, let's get to our final story. So, Dr. O'Day, again, if I'm mispronouncing that, I apologize. Uh, she is the coordinator of the People's Health Movement and basically been helping Palestinians who are uh, injured in the West Bank, dealing with COVID, um, and, you know, trying to get access to medication and stuff like that. She was, she was part of a, a movement that was, uh, that was trying to help Palestinians. 
Well, Israel didn't particularly care for that and basically said, oh, you got to shut down. You can't uh, you can't operate in, in Ramallah anymore. This isn't right. The way you're operating, we don't like it. So you got to shut it down. So she, and she didn't because why would you? She's a doctor. She's there to help people. We're in the, still in the middle of a pandemic, you know, and she's still trying to, like, take care of these people who are suffering. That's her Hippocratic oath is to make sure that she does no harm. Why would she shut down this thing that's helping Palestinians who are suffering under oppression, uh, under an apartheid occupation? So she didn't. So they raided her house. They raided her comp, they, uh, her her whole org operation. And then they detained her. So she's arrested and under, uh, currently being detained by, uh, you know, the Israeli military. For what? Now, they're, they're claiming she broke the law by not shutting down her practice. But she didn't do anything wrong to begin with, so why would she need to shut down her practice? I think this is an attempt um, for Israel to let these diseases and various other conditions run rampant within the West Bank, within Gaza, within within you know occupied Palestine, and. And say, yeah, well, look, we didn't really do anything. We have a ceasefire. We're not sending rockets in there anymore. You know, um, so it wasn't really us that ended up causing the the death of these Palestinians. But you're cutting these services. Medical services are gone. And, uh, you know, Gaza is, quote, on a diet. I covered that in, in the video I released last week about how Israel is an apartheid state. They, they literally wrote that into the legislation. Hey, we need to put Gazans on a diet. So they regulate the amount of food and water that goes into Gaza. So even if you're not firing rockets, you're still starving these people. They're still not getting the nutrition that they actually need. They're still not getting access to clean water that they actually need. These are basic needs that Israel is blocking. These are Israeli sanctions on Palestinians now. So again, here's an example of how sanctions, economic warfare, is used to oppress a group of people to weaken them. And then send propaganda to be like, oh, look, Hamas can't take care of its people. Oh, look, Fatah can't take care of its people. No, they, they would if you wouldn't get in the way. Think about it as a sports metaphor. If you're really, and I'm not even a sports guy, so if this is a little messy, it's a little messy. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to talk to the normies here. Um, you know, the average person that doesn't do deep dives into into politics and history. If you're if you're an amazing batter, right? But you're a left-handed batter, and let's say the uh, the opposing team can't really get get you striked out you you keep hitting and you keep getting home runs uh and they go hey listen uh maybe this guy's on drugs we don't we don't know but let's not take any chances left hand the, the left hand gets tied behind the back and he has to bat with his right hand and then he misses and he gets struck out and they go see he's not very good he wasn't very good it was it was it was probably drugs that's probably what it was. No, you 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 tied his left hand. You tied his dominant hand behind his back. You're not letting him do what he would do. That's basically what's happening with economic sanctions. You're tying somebody's hand to their back and then saying they're not a good batter, but they're batting one-handed and not on their dominant hand. So you manufactured that report. That's what's happening with any economic sanction that gets placed, whether it's Palestine, Iran, Cuba, Venezuela, whatever it is. And that is not capitalism saving lives. That is capitalism doing its part to cause more human misery, to cause more suffering around the world. Restricting economic, uh, economic systems and ways of life that are built on uplifting people. Socialism, common, if they, they work on uplifting people. Again, for the people that go, oh, well, what about China? What about Stalin? 
Yet those are authoritarian governments. Under true socialism and true communism, you don't veer in that direction. Because it's more about the betterment of society, not about an individual ascertaining power and wealth. That leans right back into capitalism. What reason that Israel needs to take away a doctor trying to do her job? Do no harm. That's what she was doing. She was trying to reduce harm in a, in a, 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 a region of the world that is constantly being harmed. And this isn't anything new. Uh, Israel does this all the time. And the 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 uh, great march of the great march of return, they fired on medics, and then they used the famous medic to bolster their false human shield claims. What she actually said was, "We are the shields to the people because Israeli soldiers fucking shoot people when they're down." Because of that false narrative that everybody's Hamas. Everybody's not Hamas. And even if they were, that's the legally elected government in Gaza. So now you're making a political killing. This is, so again, here, here's more examples of the fact that they're committing war crimes. And they're going against the Geneva Conventions. And there's no trial for them. Everybody's just saying silent. The international community can't stay silent when they're doing shit like this. Or they just ignore it. Or they just go, bah, huh. there's probably other reasons. Hey, I'll keep moving on. It's the same thing, the mindset of your biases. Of like, no, 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 governments can't be that bad. They are. It's happening right in front of our eyes. Anyway, uh, Zozovic says uh, Americans are under sanctions called austerity. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. That's, that's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. Uh, Holly's adding Syria and Yemen to those sanctions as well. Yes, exactly. Uh, Marco Rubio is a gusano. I don't what is a gusano? I don't think I know that translation. Should I look that up? I'm going to look that up. Is it a curse word? Did I just learn a curse word in a different language? I'm not sure I know. Oh, it, there's counter-revolutionary. Okay. It's a, it's a derogatory term for a Cuban reactionary or a counter-revolutionary. <laughs> or a worm. That's what it translates to? Oh, man. Holly, throwing, throwing shade. Throwing shade. I love it. I love it. Uh, I'm going to get caught up with your comments real quick and, and respond to those because uh, I know some folks are a little behind on, on the stream, and that's totally fine. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, Holly, you asked. Uh, yeah, the Panera question I did. I think I answered. Uh, I do have a Panera nearby. I try to go to some of the local coffee shops, though, to try to give them a little bit business, too. Uh, and, uh, ah, Zozovic says, I can give you some links to catch you up on date with the vaccine stuff. Yeah, if you leave them in the comments, I'll be able to get them, Zozovic. I appreciate that. That's that's very kind of you to do that. Uh, you're also suggesting for me to get a neti pot for my sinuses. I used to have one, but it scares the shit out of me because I feel like I'm going to drown. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the neti pot. What, honestly, what has helped with my sinus issues has been my nasal spray. Um, just doing like a, a saline nasal spray and then using like the Flonase thing clears up my sinuses for a little bit. It helps out, helps me breathe a little bit better, uh, and, and just be outside. Uh, so I, I appreciate the neti pot suggestion, but they scare the living crap out of me. Uh, <laughs> uh, Neddy pot takes a little practice, but it's effective. I, I, yeah, my, my ex-wife who used to have a lot of health problems, um, and I would try to like help her out with them. She used the neti pot and, uh, and, and she, she spoke highly of them, but every time she used them, I was like, ah, 
uh, don't drown. <laughs> like it just scares me a little bit, but I, I, I know they're pretty effective. Um, I might try it. I might try it if I can, if I can get my hands on one. Um, but, uh, yeah, they, they, they creep me out a little bit. They creep me out a little bit. Dragon uh, suggested the ivermectin story on Odyssey. I will take a look at that and try to get caught up on that information. Uh, yeah, it's just been popping up everywhere, so I kind of want to figure out what's going on with it. I know a little bit about ivermectin, but that's that's really about it. Uh, some folks, Gene pointing out Red Indie Media, uh, Holly pointing out Red Indie Media. It's a great site. Good, good uh, amalgamation of amalgamation. Is that the word I'm looking for? If Fred's still watching, that's another big dollar word right there, amalgamation. Um, yeah, it, um, it 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 compiles a lot of really good resources all together, uh, and uh, uh, it, it, it's a good place. Like I, that's where I get a bunch of my stories now. Is is either the email list directly to the websites that I that I follow, or directly on Rad Indie Media that I check two or three times a day. Uh, so yeah, uh, Gene saying a paleo diet will help. Is that with the sinus uh, sinus stuff, or or is that just in general in terms of health? Uh, and and I'm guessing paleo diet is like a primarily like a meat diet. Uh, is now how how do I add sweets to that, Gene? Because I'm a I'm a big I'm a big sweet tooth kind of guy. So uh, can I put ice cream on top of a steak? Is that allowed? Would that will that is that the thing that'll get my citizenship revoked is if I put ice cream <laughs> on top of a steak? Uh, am I allowed to do that? Uh, Fred says it's too expensive for my budget. <laughs> uh, body temp was about warming up the water so you can pour through your sinuses without irritation. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I think I need to probably do better in my diet. I, I'm a big snacker, especially when I get a little stoned. I get uh, I, I become a big snacker. So that's part of the problem with probably my diet is that I snack like crazy. Uh, so I I need to do better about that. We I do I do have a good bit of like meats and stuff like that in in, in my diet. I, I need to get back to eating well proportioned meals as well. Like I usually eat a pretty big dinner. Um, and I try to eat like a lighter lunch so that I don't get logie in the middle of the day. But yeah, I, I gotta, I, it's always a work in progress, right? With your diet and exercise and all that kind of stuff. It's always a work in progress. Uh, so that's, that's kind of the thing that I'm, that I'm trying to do. Uh, but with all that said and done, let's wrap up the stream here. Uh, if you guys enjoyed today's show, please make sure you hit the like button, share button, and make sure you're subscribed wherever you're watching, whether it's Rockfin, Odyssey, whether you're watching this later on YouTube, whether you're listening to the audio version, whether you're on Facebook, uh, make sure you're subscribed to get notifications about when I go live. I usually go live Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, they last anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half, depending on the stories we're covering. Uh, and, uh, I'm going to try to add the, uh, you know, maybe just one segment out of the week, uh, to road reflection reviews, which, which probably will be more of a pop culture type of segment, uh, where I talk about uh, a movie or a TV show that I'm, that I've watched and what I thought about it, you know, it might be something older. That's, that's going to be a part of the channel. Cause I'd like to add some nerdy shit. To, to this channel too and and kind of mix nerdiness and politics together um you know so uh yeah keep keep your eyes peeled for that uh if you want to make a donation you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate uh k-r-i-s-h-m-o-h-a-n-h-a-h-a.com slash donate uh make a one-time donation become a sustaining member you can also become a a, a a paid subscriber on rockfin which will help all the creators on rockfin or you can leave a tip over on rockfin as well you can leave uh library credit donations over on odyssey and i believe they're also going to be updating odyssey to include dollar donations so that's pretty cool uh as well uh and last but not least if you would like to um get weekly emails from me that includes a whole list of podcasts, videos, live shows, a couple of essays that I might be writing. Uh, you can join my Substack at krishmohanhaha.substack.com. Uh, 
Uh, I do have live shows coming up in Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Baltimore, Lansing, Detroit, Little Rock. All of the information about the venues, dates, times, tickets are available on my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Uh, there's a bunch of shows that need tickets, uh, and I will be setting up tickets for those in the coming weeks. So uh, stay tuned for that. I'll probably put up a post where you guys can see all that information as well. Um, and like I said, I'll have some car updates. I was actually going to write the the whole debacle top to bottom uh, for the email list and put it up on my website this past weekend. But I just got a couple developments where, um, you know, I'm going to wait uh, and not be a, as public about it for right now. Uh, but regardless of what happens with that situation, you guys will know uh, the whole story and, and uh, uh, you know, get all the updates. Uh, but we're going to wrap things up here. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for uh, leaving comments and links. Uh, Gene, Zozovics, Holly, Fred, Dragonata over on uh, over on the Odyssey. Uh, you guys are fantastic. I will see you guys tomorrow. Uh, same bat time, same bat channel, uh, and with way less bat money because I'm not a billionaire uh, and I don't want to be. Uh, but uh, yeah, tomorrow, 4.30 Eastern, we'll be back. Uh, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you on the road.